you've got this sparkly new Epson Fast Photo 680 photo scanner. But how on earth do you use it? Well, let me walk you through how to use your Epson Fast Photo scanner. Hi, I'm Amanda Lithcott, the photo organizer, and I'm all about helping you preserve and share your precious photo and video memories without getting overwhelmed. If you're looking to rediscover life's special moments and protect them for future generations, then be sure to subscribe and click that little bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Digitizing your photos is a great way to be able to share and save your precious printed photos. I love a good photo scanner and the Epson Farts Photo is a great option. But unless you use it right, it is not going to give you the results you want. But first, if you want the lowdown on all things photo scanning, then check out my other video talking you through your scanner options that you can access through the link above. What is the Epson Fast Photo 680W? The Epson Fast Photo is a high speed photo scanner that will essentially take a stack of printed photos, automatically feed it in front of a scanning element and scan them. It will scan both printed photos and documents, but it's specifically made for photos, so the aim is to give you a great digitized photo. To buy, it will cost a few hundred dollars or pounds, so it's pretty affordable. Setting it up. So you have your brand new scanner, but before you start doing some scanning, you need to set it up. When it comes to connecting your scanner to the, your computer, you have a couple of options. You can use the USB cable provided and connect it directly into your computer. However, if your computer only has USB-C ports, you will have to get a converter to connect the USB cable. But the added bonus of the Fast Photo 680 is that you can wirelessly connect your scanner to the computer. To set up the wireless connection, you just need to download the installation software from Epsom and follow the instructions. However, like any printer in this world, it can be a little bit temperamental when keeping that wireless connection. So be prepared. When it comes to software to use with your Fast Photo, there are external software options out there if you want to go down that route. But I would highly recommend using the software provided by Epsom specifically for the Fast Photo scanner. However, if you are scanning documents, which the Fast Photo can also do, I would switch and use the Scan Smart software from Epsom that is specifically made for document scanning. Settings for scanning photos. But before you get going on some scanning, hold on there. We need to make sure the settings are correct. So let me walk you through the settings that I like to use. Open the Epsom Fast Photo program and go to settings in the top right hand corner. The left hand side has all of our settings options and we're going to go through them so you can see what I like to use. For organization, you first need to select where you want to save your files. You can then also select a prefix for your photos. So if you don't give it a date and another name when you start scanning, it will put that on it. But more about that later when we talk about scanning. Tick to be prompted to describe each batch where the magic happens later. The rest I leave as is. Now in enhancements, this is where you can play around with the settings that you like. Auto enhance will enhance the brightness, contrast and saturation. I find that it can go a bit bright, so I tend to keep that off. For remove red eye, it works well, but I don't get a lot of red eye, so I tend to leave that off as well. Restore faded colors will restore colors that are faded or get rid of that red hue you get on old photos. Sometimes it works well and other times I find the green goes a little bit crazy, so it's worth doing some testing and deciding whether you like it. Then you have an option as to how these enhancements will be applied. You can put them directly onto the photo or on a second copy. It's up to you. I tend to test and then just go directly as I don't want duplicates. But if you do want both, you will get a photo and then another photo with underscore A showing where the enhancements have been done. Now in scanning settings, this is the important part. So you need to select the photo type of what you are doing. And then in resolution, go for 600 DPI for old photos. You are only going to get so good with these old images. So going for 1200, you are just going to end up with crazy large file sizes and it's going to take an age to scan. So not a good option. 
for file format scan as TIFF because then you can adjust what you want afterwards with no compression. You can always save it as a JPEG later to share and reduce the file size. For scanning the back of the photos, I always leave this on as you never know what gems you will find on the back. But if you have paper graphics or words that are a deep color, you're gonna have a lot of backs to delete. So I tend to take it down a notch so that some of that is ignored. And you can identify those back photos with an underscore B as a back photo. In advanced settings, I tick all of these, auto rotation, curled photo correction, and reducing lines and streaks. In the upload section, you can link your Dropbox or Google Drive and load it directly into there if you aren't already syncing your laptop via an app. So that feels a little bit redundant if you have an app already. For scanner settings, click on the device settings. There is one setting I would change under scanner settings, which is set the detect glass dirt to high. So it will give you a little reminder message to clean your glass every so often. And if it notes streaks, it will tell you. Scanning photos. Before you go Anywhere near the scanner, no doubt your photos have been kept in a dusty box, in a dusty attic, or a dusty cupboard, or a dusty basement. So you need to get your photos ready for scanning with a bit of cleaning. If you want to know how to prepare your photos for scanning, then check out my other video on how to prepare your photos for scanning through the link above. Once you're ready, you can load your photos into the input tray. The photos need to face forward on the widest edge is usually the best option because remember we have auto rotation. So it's best to keep the photos of one size in the same batch with all the same orientation. Then you just need to squish in the guides and for delicate photos, you also have a carrier sheet that comes with the scanner that you can put them in. Then it's straightforward to do a scan. You can use the button on the front to quick scan and this will launch the fast photo program automatically on your computer or press start scan on the fast photo program. As we asked it to ask us to describe each photo, you get a pop-up and in here you can select the year or the season or the month and add any additional information that you want in the file name. All this information will be replacing the default that you put in the settings. And this is where the magic happens. So if you put December 1983, it will make the scan creation date that date. So not the date you are scanning your images like for other scanners. Magic. I always tick to create a subfolder, press start and off it goes. If you have more photos to scan of that batch, once it's done the first batch, a pop-up will appear asking you if you are done or if you have more. So if you have more with the same details, put them in the scanner and say go. If not, just say you're done. And once you're done, you can see the images in the Fast Photo program. And if you want, you can edit them there. So you can rotate, you can date stuff, you can do whatever you want. But I would say there are better programs for things like that, like Photoshop or Lightroom, if you want to go down that route. Scanning documents. As I have already mentioned, the Epson Fast Photo can also be used to scan documents if you want, which is super easy. So let me show you how. For scanning documents, I use the Scan Smart software. It is the document software for the Fast Photo. So open up Scan Smart, put your document in the scanner with the front facing downwards, so away from you. Then on the scan smart, select single or double sided. Yes, it can do two sides at once. So make your selection and it will scan your document. Then some images appear of your scan. So you just need to pick the ones you want to save. Press command or control to select multiple pages and then click next. You can now select your action. You have a few options like attaching it to an email, sending it to OneDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox, or Evernote. You can save it as a Word, Excel, or PowerPoint document, or you can print it or simply save it, which is what I'm going to do. So you give your file a name and the scanner is a bit clever. It can pick up dates in the document and add it to the file name if there's a date. How good is that? So you just need to say where you want to save it, save it, and you are done. Maintaining the scanner. 
In order to keep your photos streak free, you need to clean the fast photo a lot. And I mean not just at the start of your scanning and at the end of your scanning, I mean during your scanning as well. Because of the settings we've put in for the scanner, it will remind you to keep cleaning after a certain number of photos but I like to do it after each batch just to keep safe. It may seem like a pain, but also finding a streak across a ton of photos and having to redo them is just as annoying. To clean the false photo, they give you a microfiber cloth that you can use to clean, but you can also put some glasses cleaner onto a soft dry cloth to clean the scaling elements more thoroughly. You can also clean the rollers by opening up the scanner pressing the scan button for two seconds and then when you keep pressing the scan button the rollers will turn around so you can clean them. As I said it is good idea to clean throughout your scanning but I like to give it a thorough clean of the scanner before I put it away to keep it clean and streak free. Epsom Fast Photo The Lowdown I like the fast photo for scanning your photos because it's actually made for photo scanning and it's fast. I mean, it's in the name. I think the enhancements that the software can do are really good. But for me, the real bonus is the actual dating of the photo scan of the date it was taken, which is a right pain to correct after scanning, as well as being able to name the scans different things as you scan. However, the downside is the constant cleaning to make sure you don't get lines on your digitized photos, as well as the fact that the scanner is limited to printed photos and documents. So if you have any slides or negatives, this scanner is not the one for you. I would check out the Epson Perfection V600 flatbed. So there you have it, how to digitize your photos in seconds with the Epson Fast Photo 680 photo scanner. I would love to hear about what you use to digitize your photos. Leave them in the comments below. Are you struggling to actually start organizing your photos and videos and don't know where to start? I have put together a simple, straightforward, quick start guide to organizing your photos and videos that can be accessed through the links below. So click through and I will see you there. If you enjoyed this video, then go ahead with a like and a share and why not subscribe? Have fun rediscovering your memories. I'll see you in my next video.